Let's open today with a quick question. Does reading from screens impair comprehension? And if so, why? Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's From Theory to Practice, where I take a look at the research so you don't have to. Now, as you know, we're taking a journey through my new book, The Digital Delusion, and this week we're going to take a look at Chapter 3, Against the Brain. Now, in Chapter 2, we took a look at all the hard data showing that ed tech harms learning, but it's a sad fact that data doesn't really matter all that much. History is full of examples of data having no real impact on the world. Like, think about asbestos. We knew for decades that people who worked with asbestos had higher rates of cancer than everyone else, but no one did anything about it. Why? Only once data is combined with mechanism, only once we can explain why the data is saying what it's doing, that's when we see moves. So when researchers were able to explain small bits of asbestos lodged in the lungs causing tumors, that's when people started passing laws, that's when things started getting done. So chapter three is all about mechanisms. Why is ed tech harming learning? And we take a look at three intractable mechanisms. These are attention, empathy, and additive transfer. Now, unfortunately, those are too big of topics to go into today. So I figure today on this video, let's take a look at a bonus mechanism, something we don't dive too deeply into the book, but that is still super important. And the article I've selected this week is called Cognitive Map or Medium Materiality, Reading on Paper and Screen. Now, we've known for decades that when people read from screens as opposed to paper, learning, understanding, comprehension go down. And how bad is it? The effect size of screens compared to paper is about negative 0.16. But realistically, if we just look at expository tech, that effect drops to negative 0.29. So if you're just reading Harry Potter or something else, it might not be that bad. But once you start reading to learn, reading from screens is really bad. And when you include an adult to help a kid while reading on a screen, that only bumps up to negative 0.22. Now, again, we've had this data for a while, but nothing really has changed all that much in schools because very few of us understand the mechanism. So why? Why is the screen so poor for comprehension? Well, there were two big theories kind of bouncing around. Theory number one was materiality. This said the actual physical feel of a book, your fingers on the page, was somehow broadening, deepening your learning of that material. So the physical touch itself seemed to matter. But the other theory was called cognitive mapping. This says that a huge chunk of human memory is space. Where in space did something occur? ultimately becomes part of the memory we form for that thing. So I always say, think about it like this. I don't know if you ever played a video game. I used to play it growing up called Grand Theft Auto. Now, what that video game was, it was just a giant open world and you can go anywhere you want to. So to make sure nobody got lost, they put this little map in the corner of the screen. So at all times you knew where you were in relation to everything else. Your brain has that map. And every time you make a memory, it becomes stamped with a three-dimensional location. Where did this occur? Now, books, hard copy books, have a clear, unchanging three-dimensional location. Until a book burns into dust, the exact same words will be in the exact same position in the exact same spot of the book forever. Unfortunately, when you read that same material on a screen, there now is no three-dimensional location. The words will start at the bottom of the screen, go through the middle, out the top. An entire aspect of human memory basically just gets dumped. So these researchers this paper came along and they came up with a really ingenious way to test this. Is it materiality or is it space that seems to matter? So they got three different groups together. Group number one was asked to read comic books. They figured comic books have information and very important three-dimensional layout, so this is the perfect medium to test materiality versus cognitive mapping. So group one kids just read a comic book. Group two kids read those same comic books, but on a screen. So this is the materiality effect. If materiality matters, then the kids with the hard copy versus the kids with the screen, we should see a big difference there. And group three read the same comics from a screen, but they were only allowed to see one cell at a time. So in this case, they took away all spatial cues. There was no clear spatial organization for what you're reading. So you could see this group was testing that cognitive mapping idea. And they measured three different things. They measured time to read, how long did it take you to read the comic books, immersion out of a score of 10, how deep did you get involved with the reading, and comprehension out of a possible 17 points on a quiz the next day, how well do you remember what you read? So let's start here, time to read. Kids who read the physical comic book took them about 21 minutes and two seconds to read. Cool. Kids who read the complete digital copy, so the materiality group, took them about 21 minutes, 52 seconds, so about 3% longer. A little worse, but not huge. But what about those kids who looked at the single cells on the computer? Took them 23 minutes and 20 seconds, a full 10% longer than the kids reading the physical books. So that's one check for the cognitive mapping idea. Next, immersion. The kids who read the physical comic book rated a 9 out of 10 on their immersion. The kids who read the full copy digital, 
8.75. So again, only about a 3% drop. But the kids who read the single cell digital copies, 7.23. That's a 20% drop compared to the kids who had the physical book. So tick number two for cognitive mapping. And finally, when it came to comprehension, memory, the kids who read the physical comic book scored a 14.2 out of 17. The kids who read the full version digital text, 13.8 out of 17. So again, only about 3% less. But the kids who read the single cell digital version, 12.0, 15% less than the kids who read the physical comic books. So we see the materiality idea has a little impact, about a 3% negative change in all measures, which isn't huge, but that cognitive mapping seems to be where everything is landing. The fact that physical books have clear, unchanging space and that human biology demands physical space to form deep memories seems to be the reason why we remember more from paper than from screens. And somebody asked me the other day, well, what about Kindles, where you can flip through the pages on Kindle? Well, only one big analysis has been done on this. And what they found was screens compared to hard copy were negative 0.23, and Kindles compared to hard copy were about negative 0.12. So not as bad as scrolling on a screen, but still not as good as having the book in your hand. Why? Two reasons. One, even though the materiality effect is small, it does matter. But two, a book has three dimensions, vertical, horizontal, and depth. A Kindle only has two. You have up and down, side to side, but you never know how deep through that book you're getting. And lacking that third dimension seems to be a reason why a Kindle still doesn't perform as well as a hard copy book. So we're back to our questions. Does reading from screens impair comprehension? Absolutely. And if so, why? Due to the spatial nature of our memory. So let's bring this back now to schools. What does this mean for us as teachers, as students? Number one, it's time to go back to embracing textbooks. A lot of schools have moved to digital textbooks because they're cheaper and easier to handle. And those are really important administrative concerns. But now you get to ask, what is the function of school? And if the function of school at any level has to do with learning, then any decision made because of administrative convenience has to play second fiddle to any consideration having to do with learning. And in this case, if kids learn more from books, I don't care how easy digital is, we've got to focus back on what's going to help them learn most. Another idea then is this idea of reinforcing spatial anchoring everywhere. If space matters in books, and that means, yes, it's going to matter everywhere. So this comes back to design elements. How are we designing our school, our playground, most importantly, our classrooms? When you have a clear, highly consistent structure in your classroom, the easier it is for people to start to memorize those locations, start to put that on backup autopilot, and it frees up cognitive resources for them to now focus on what learning is going on. This is one of the reasons why we've seen having a consistent seating arrangement seems to actually boost learning a little bit. Now, there are caveats to that, but we can talk about that another time. But think about it. As a kid, if I am in the same spot with relation to what I'm learning every single day, my brain can quickly make sense of this spatial relationship, start to put that on autopilot, and by about day three or four, I freed up so much more cognitive effort to actually focus on what's happening. So where else can we use spatial anchoring or organization outside of books? And last but not least, some of us have to start rethinking homework. A lot of homework, similar to textbooks, has moved online, typically for convenience. But when homework goes online, even if we're not talking about reading-based homework, if we're just talking about, say, math-based homework, performance and learning will still drop compared to physical hard copy work. So how can we think about returning to physical books, to physical worksheets, to physical projects? Now this might require some rethinking. If we decide to move from a screen back to paper, we might now have to consider things like worked examples. Can we embed that in the hard copy work itself? Or if you think about the flipped classroom, if you ask me to go home and watch a short video on a topic versus read the same words on hard copy, I will learn more and remember more from that hard copy. So where can we bring analog back into the homework equation? Now, if you're interested in diving into this a bit more, I have two other videos on this topic. One specifically about homework, how much homework is too much per night. And the other one about this idea of worked examples. What are they? How can we embed them into homework to make analog homework even more effective? But that is chapter four from my new book, The Digital Delusion Against the Brain. That's where we take a look at mechanisms. The book comes out on December 7th, 2025. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching. If, you, if you'd like to dive into more topics, you can take a look for us online at www.lmeglobal.net, or you can take a look at our award-winning science of learning course called The Learning Blueprint for both teachers and students. Otherwise, thank you so much, and I'll see you all at the next one. Bye, everyone.